Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Second Cup of Coffee. Pastor Tom with you. Week three of our series, Ask ASK. Uh, go find the other two weeks uh, and you can get caught up if you haven't been tracking with us. But it's really out of James 4 and a verse that we quote a lot. And uh, I don't know as a pastor even that I quote it always in context. And it says this, yet you do not have because you do not ask. We assume with that, that if I ask, I'm going to receive. Uh, and you will, but you may receive a no. And we've talked about that over the last couple of weeks and no's are like, ow. Um, but God wants to take um, the, one of the O's out of the good things that we desire. And he wants to give us instead of the, we, he, instead he wants to give us the God things. Good things aren't always God things. And sometimes that requires us going, oh, really? But releasing it anyway, allowing a good thing to be shrunk down, not in, in, not in scope, not in, in purpose and not in um, uh, impact, but just shrunk down from good to God. Because when I get to the God thing, I'm going to have peace. I'm going to have purpose. I'm going to have provision. I'm going to have power. I, I'm going to have um, uh, all of those things to walk it out. So here we are on, on week three. And I have to tell you from a personal testimony, look, if you read down in James, I'll get to my personal testimony in a second. It says this, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Why? Because the spirit of who dwells in us yearns jealously is what it says, but he gives more grace. There is the spirit of God that is yearning for you to step away from things that are distracting you from one, your relationship, and two, your purpose. Your relationship will lead with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, will lead you to your purpose. But it always has to stay in the driver's seat. I'm pursuing you, God, you, Father, you, Holy Spirit, you, Jesus, by relationship, and I'm trusting that that relationship will form me, transform me, and, and, and correct me to a place that I can see the purpose for which I was created, even if that's unclear right now. Simplify it. You ready? Then I'll give you my testimony. You have to change your no to a yes. We want God to change his no to a yes, but it's actually reversed. We need to change our no to a yes to see clearly the purpose and the path that God has laid out before us. And so we can clearly hear the voice behind us saying, this is the path, walk ye in it. Give you my testimony and we'll be done. 14 years old, I used to talk, I've talked about this in sermons over the years, laugh about it, chuckle about it. And I didn't realize God wasn't laughing or chuckling about it, but we'll get to that. 14 years old, walking in my gym, I could tell you where I was. My coach looking at me, he said, you're called to be a pastor. And I walked past him and I thought to myself, I am not doing that. No, 14 years old, told God, no. Fast forward over, oh my goodness, over 30 years. I, I, I submitted to the call of being a pastor. I was a youth pastor. I was ordained. I was an associate pastor. I was standing at the front of our church in the midst of worship. God begins to speak to me. And I knew there was something between us. And I was like, God, I don't know what this is. And he said, when you were 14, you told me no. You said that you would not be a pastor. And he said, now you went ahead and did it, which is good. He said, but the no is still between us. And I'm like, well, I'm thinking, why is the no still between us? And he said this, because, and you need to repent and it needs to be dealt with, right? No's between us. You need to repent and it needs to be dealt with. And I'm like, but I did what you said. He said, but the no still matters. And I'm like, why does the no matter? He said, because if we leave it there and things go south or things get difficult, you will point back and tell me I never wanted to do it anyway. He said, that can't be there. I'm crying at this point. Nobody else knows what's going on. It's not over our loudspeaker. People are worshiping. My wife's next to me worshiping, or she was leading one of the two. All of this is going on, and I'm weeping, and all I can say is, God, I'm sorry. 
please forgive me. And I'm telling you, when I did, it shifted, boom. And I could see this alignment came like boom, 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 boom. And I could see a path right before me that I could not see before. Why? Because my no had to be turned into a yes. Because I can have no other options or arguments with God, no matter how this turns out. And I have promises about that, that maybe I'll talk about another day, another time. But no matter how this turns out, I said yes to the call and the fullness of however it plays out in my life and wherever it leads me. And I am now at peace. There is no wrestle. There is no question. There is none of that. But my no had to become a yes. Even though I was walking in the yes, I had to repent of saying no. So I could not go back to it ever. Shut that door. Change your no to a yes. I'm telling you, it will revolutionize your hearing, your vision, and you will clearly see the path before you. Why are you laboring in this, Pastor? Because some of you have laid hold of other people's callings and what's been prepared for them because you said no for what was prepared for you. And until you repent of that, you won't see clearly or have a peace about what God has asked you to do and you will not have a peace in your pursuit because there is something still between you and him. Get it cleared up, I'm telling you. It'll change your life. It'll revolutionize, revolutionize your walk and your vision. It's crazy, and it's crazy good. He loves you. Get with him. Talk to him. Ask him, have I ever said no? And if so, take me back so I can say yes, because I want to walk in the fullness of what you called me. God bless you. Glad you found us. Look forward to talking to you um, next month. Next week, we have a great conversation. So tune back in as we look at this, this theme, ask. So see you next week. God bless you.